Alright, so we're going to start the Maimar Pesach Eliyahu in uh, Torah Ur. So before we do, we'll, let's just read the first paragraph of Pesach Eliyahu and translate it. Everybody in? Mm-hmm. It's page 149 in that Siddur Dayel. Okay. About on the page. So who wants to try? Anyone want to read? The English or the Hebrew? Damn it, we're going to try to translate it also. Oh. The reader is going to try and translate. I can try. Where, where does it start? No, because I want us to see inside the words. Where does it start? Well, you're getting there. You're getting there. you got to jump on. Pasach Eliyahu. Pasach Eliyahu Omer. So Pasach means like open. Yeah. Eliyahu Omer. How cool. You're handwritten. You're like a caveman. This is awesome. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Okay. Like a I'm going to put this right here close to my heart. Thanks, Eliezer. That's cool. All right, go ahead. Pasek Eliyahu Omer. The Amar. Amar, so he opens and says? Yeah, Eliyahu. Who's Eliyahu here? Yes, the prophet Elijah said, said these words. This is his little testimony. Eliyahu opened and said, Ribon Almim. Uh, Rebun like masters? Yeah, Al-mim, master. Ma- master al mean of the world. So. Master of the world, like Rebun of Shalom, yeah. that's how you say it, right? Ta'anit hu... Ta'ant? Ta'ant hu chad lo ve chushpan. Chushpan? Right, what does it mean? Uh, chad is one, ta'ant... What's not, ant? Ant. Ant is like ata. Ani, are you? It's like ata. You are one. Ant, you? Are one. Velo chesh... Kushpan, without any measure? Yeah, without a calculation. Without a calculation. What does that mean, first of all? You're one without a calculation. So you didn't do any math to figure it out? One? <laughs> That's true. <laughs> the easy one. You can't divide, you can't subtract, you can't divide. You can't count it. <laughs> okay, because there's one. There's, there's something called one. Achad Hamanoi. There's one called one of one, two, three, four, five. That type of one is countable. It's b'chushban. It has. A, it ha- takes up a place in terms of all the other ones. This is this is the one which is not in the count. It's, a, it's the one that has everything inside of it, and it's a, and, and you can't count it. Okay. Aunt who? Ila alkaha ilan. Right. What does it mean? So at you are like above. I'll call all the Ilan of the worlds. All the all the above. All the above. Ata ila I'll call Ilain. You are higher than all high things. You're above all things that are above. So sima I'll call simin simin. Right. So sim sima like a symbol. Satum. Oh. Satum means what? Closed, hidden, secret. Stima, I'll call simin. You're secret from all secret things. The secret things you're secret from them. Place Makshava to Sifa to to Pisa Vach Klau. Place yeah. Makshava without any thought. Place there is not like Ain. There isn't any think like Makshava. Any thought? To to Pisa. Uh, that we just said that before. No. No. What's uh, to Pisa? You know, Shavu. Tafos. Yeah. What is Litfos? Litfos. No. Litfos to grab to hold, right? Um, so lace machshava tefisa. We're do, we're translating pasach eliyahu. Meanwhile, lace machshava tefisa. What is it? No thought grasps. No grasp can can grasp it. No Bach, grasp. you klal at all. <laughs> Everyone gets that there. Guys, these are some. These are to, to put it mildly. These are some classic lines. Yeah. So it's definitely worth your while to have a look here and like know what it says. It's not that complicated, right? Satima, Satima is what? Satima is closed, secret here, it means. Okay. Hidden, right? Sima al simin. You are hidden among, behind all hidden things. Lace machshava tefisa vach klal. No thought, tefisa vach, can grasp you at all. So what are we talking about right now? This is all very detailed. If you go into all the, we're going to learn a whole mimer about it. All these words are, you can break it apart in an unbelievable measure. In other words, the Arizal, if you want to know what's what, like a little bit of how this, what we're looking at here, it's a small degree. He sat in a tent on the Nile River, right? Month after month, year after year. What was he doing? He was just looking at the words of the Zohar and realizing that every single word is like, every single word is like another level. And it was like a whole coded thing. So when he winds up coming out with the Eitz Chaim, which comes out with all these massive, it's like a calculus book, level after level after level, intrinsic 
right, tiny little parts that go in one inside the other. Where do you get all that information? So it's all inside of here, just like plugged in in a secret way. So when you're reading each word, it's like a whole other level. So in other words, what are we saying all right now? All that we're talking about is this level of ant, this level which is you, which is not countable, it's higher than all things, hidden behind all things, and un- no thought can grasp it at all. What basically are we talking about right now? The Orin Sof. Okay. Atu Tafikas Asar Tikunin. Tikunin? Yeah. Atu, so you are Tafikas. I don't know what that is. Like Nafik, we had it in the Gemara recently. Nafik lay. Bring out. You bring out Puk, go out. Uh, right? Antu the Apikas, you are he. So that for example, just like to give you like a little drop of what I was saying, like Ant who seemingly it's just saying you are he that brings out. No, it's three different levels. Ant, then there's who, the apikas. You know, it's like there's okay, anyway, it's very, very thick with meaning. But meaning we'll just go on the simple level. It's you that bring out you are, it, you are he that brings out what? The fixing. Tikunin. Asar tikunin. Ten. Ten, ten levels, ten makos, ten, ten tikkunin. Ten tikkunin. Yeah. Well, whatever the tikkun. Now, this is actually I wanted to get to here. We'll go up, drop long further just to finish the concept. But this is what the whole mimer is about. Why? What is he? What do you think he's talking about? We were talking about you, which is the orient sof that no thought can grasp at all, and you're an uncountable oneness beyond number. And then we start saying you're the one that brings out aser tikkunin. What do you think the tikkunin are? Obviously, ten spheres. The ten spheres of maybe of what world? Let's see us. Probably, right? This is because there's the Orin Sof, and then there's the beginning. You, you fashion for yourself these ten spheros, and why are they called Tikkunin? Why don't they say Asur Spheros? Like, we're, you know, this is the origin of the whole matter here. This is Eliyahu Anavi telling Mamash, Rabbi Shem Bar Yochai what's, what's going on up there. So he doesn't call them Spheros, he calls them Tikkunin. And that's basically what the whole Mimer is going to be about, our Mimer. Okay, so Antu Da Pikas Asur Tikkunin, Ve. Ve. Karinan Liot Aser Lahon Lahon Aser Sephiron. Right, and what does that mean? For, to call like call them the ten spheres. And you right, the Karinan Lahon, and you called them Aser Sephiron. You called them the ten spheres. So they're really they're the, the proper right, thing is they're the Tikkunin. The garments that we call the spheron. Right? Oh, I say garments. Oh, because you're reading in English. But you have to know that... The, oh, it's amazing. Or no, because you said tikkunin, you said garments because you read the English, I assume. Right. But you have to understand, that's, that's a... What does tikkun mean? Tikkun means garments? No. So I think that they, they got this translation, Mechlal, from this mimer. Because al Rebbe basically comes to explain oh, that tikkunin really? is garments. <laughs> so the whole English translation in the city, you don't even realize where uh, things come from. How do they decide to translate this word? Uh, they need a pshat. The Alter Rebbe in this mimer goes into this whole thing that it means garments, but really it means tikkun. It could have been fixings. They could have translated tikkun in, in more simple or straightforward ways. Wow. Regardless. What's that? Remember to always translate tikkun as clothes now. Not necessarily. That's what I'm saying. It's a unique thing. I don't know if they have a Hebrew. About, yeah, the ten spheres. They call them, they're considered garments or tikkun. We call them ten sephirot. Uh, okay, v'kreen lahon. Interesting. interesting. Said, yeah, okay. It be called sephirot, but we the ones Yeah. That, I like that. That's yeah. You're right. That's cool. I didn't even pick up on that. V'kreen and lahon. We call them right. asr sephiron. Okay, it's an interesting thing. Right. Okay, what are they? What are they for? <laughs> Keep going. Let's uh, go a little bit further. What's that? Uh, because? Bring out. Like if we say like nafkamina. You know what I'm saying? If we talk about the nafkamina. That comes, that means to, what comes out of it? What's brought out of it? Israel, feel welcome to join us if you like, but otherwise you can take a chavrusa. We're happy to have more members of our crazy team over here, though, if you want. <laughs> yeah. Lan haga, bem alim, se si mim, the low is galim. Okay, good place to stop. What does it mean? Uh, so you made like these... Benef- like hana, like benefit, like pleasure? Hanhaga. Oh. Uh... Lanhaga, what's a hanhaga? Hanhaga. Is it, is it pleasure? Minhog. That's right, back. Minhag. Oh, oh okay. tradition? Minhag, like lanhaga also it means the custom is you, you, you like custom them. You, it's like a verb. Lanhaga vahon almin, to conduct, I would say. To conduct the worlds? They conduct with them, vahon almin sasimin, hidden worlds. Oh. De la isgalian, that are not revealed. Okay. Vahalmin de isgalian, and worlds that are re- revealed. Both. 
So you conduct with them hidden worlds that are not revealed and worlds that are revealed. What's that talking about? Whoa, spheros. Wait, no, it says you made these ten tikkunin, and we call them spheros. And then it says that you um, conduct with them hidden worlds that are not revealed and revealed worlds. We take that. What are, what are those different kinds of worlds there all of a sudden? The four worlds. Four worlds. Which ones are which? Oh, the Zerampin is revealed. Zerampin and Malchus, which is basically Vav K, are called the revealed worlds. And the two upper ones are And Yud K, right? Atzilus, let's say, and Bria are called the concealed worlds. Right. Right? Okay, so you made these ten spheros through which you conduct, let's say, hidden and revealed worlds. I guess you could, there's that, that idea of breaking it down to Yud K, Vav K definitely the classic way of breaking down the hidden hidden worlds and the revealed worlds but theoretically yeah it could be it could oh, go on other things I, I think said, is that a copy right now we're just we're just touching out Pasach Eliyahu we're about to start the mind okay are you recording like is that a watch how you doing <laughs> what's that no 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 we're gonna stop at the at the next, like certain, certain convenient place you want to do the whole thing yeah I'd like to do the whole I don't mind. It's actually yeah, a nice. Everyone on board. It's a nice. It's a nice. Uh, yeah. Everyone's huh? in. We're in. We'll just go to where I was. Where I was going to go to. Okay, let's go on. So lies galian, but Amadi is galian. Okay, so you conduct with them worlds that are not revealed and worlds that are revealed. Yeah. Oh, I'm going. I think you're doing good. Last line. Last word on the line. Uvahon. Uvahon. Mm-hmm. Okay, stop. So, uva, uva hon, what does it mean? Understood. And, no, it's in, in them. It's really hon, like them. Uva hem, uva hen, right? It's, a, it's a Aramaic. So, in them, with them, is kasiyas. What does it mean? Kiso, you hide. Mibne nasha. Right? You, you, cover, you cover yourself. From the children nasha? Bne nasha means basically man. Oh. Yeah, B'nai Nash is how you would say it. Uh, yeah, B'nai Nash, it means man. B'nai Adam, basically, in Hebrew. Like, I guess the word Nash comes from the word Anashim, Mistama. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, Nash. Is there hidden? Is with them you hide from man. In other words, this is basically like, on one hand, you create worlds with them, hit higher and lower worlds. You like fashion these things for yourself. It's kind of very getting you inside. And with them, you create hidden and revealed worlds, but also with them, you hide from man. Now, what does that mean for a second? What does it mean that with them, you hide from them? This, I feel like this maybe is the most important line. It's also Nogea to the Mimer. With these ten spheres, you hide from man? What's the shot? Ten spheres, spiritual worlds, we can't... What's the question we're asking? Sorry, guys, what's the question? What does it mean? What does it mean? What we just said? With these, with these, you hide from man. We're talking about from the with the ten spheres. Hashem hides from us. That's kind of a chiddush, no? We're thinking Hashem is like basically speaking with us through the ten spheres. What does it mean? Well, I'm just thinking like there are you know there are people in the world who who say like, spirituality is not tangible. You can't can't measure it. You can't touch it. That's right. why we don't necessarily believe in it. Right. So maybe that's what he's saying. Yeah, hide from men in these spiritual worlds, so, like. In these other worlds, that we we're not, we don't can't perceive through our senses. In other words, why are you hiding? Because, but he says I, with him he also creates revealed worlds. It's a problem. Okay. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> it's a problem. So why with these, which mistama are the things that are meant to be known to man, is he hiding from us? See what I'm saying? Hmm. <laughs> Why is he hiding it? Why, why, it says, I'm just reading the words. I'm asking you guys what it means. It says here that with these ten spheres that he conducts the worlds with, he hides from man. I wouldn't necessarily have said that if I was Eliyahu and Navi, but he said it. <laughs> he's, hiding, he's hiding the knowledge that they exist. We have made the effort to go He? Who's he? First of all, on to, we're talking to, we're talking to you. You are he who is above all hidden things. That, what level is that? On who chad v'lo chushban. This level of... The f- and then that thing, we're talking about you, made these ten things. And we're saying that with them, you hide from man. Who's you that is hiding from man now? The one we were talking about to begin with, the Orain so That because uh, we see these things, on one hand, they create the world. Ah, inside but on the them, other you hand, hide yourself. No, no, not necessarily. No, you're hiding from us. On the other hand, 
we can't see beyond them. Right. Basically, they create the, like, the parameters uh, of our existence. So the oneness, which is you, you're hiding from us because of them. On the, we wouldn't even exist if it wasn't for them. But at the same time, when they come in, you use them to hide from us. We are, you are not ten spheros at the end of the day, right? You're the antu chad v'lo b'chushman. We just said, you're one without a calculation. You're not ten. And then we said, you fashion for yourself these ten spheros and you, and you make everything with them and you hide from us with them. It's deep. Wow. I heard a muscle from that from Rashbia way back when in Grand Heights. If you take a piece of paper and you show it to the class, what do you see? A piece of paper, right? So you write SOS on the paper. You don't see a piece of paper anymore. You forget the paper. Right, right, right. So that's what you have over here. It's the uh, forest through the trees kind of thing, right? Can't find the forest through the trees. They said, you know, you're in the middle of the forest and all you see is trees. Say, where's the forest? It's, the, it's all around you, but all you see is like what's up sort of cropping out to you. And, <laughs> that's great. And uh, that's, a, that's a famous, uh, you know, what they say on the, on the streets. Okay. In the SOS. <laughs> no, that's an interesting thing. You, you remember from all then, the must be a said SOS. He didn't say Dafka SOS. Oh, he didn't say Dafka SOS. That's a good one because that's uh, <laughs> that is his own <laughs> le- level of meaning. That's awesome. <laughs> So, um, one more line. Let's just kind of get back to the mimer here. But, Ant Va'antu. Va'antu. The Kesher Lon Um Yachi Lon. Lon. Okay, good. What does it mean? Again, Antu. We're going back to this Ant. So, your relationship with these 10 things that you're the one, the Kasher Lon, that, what's Kasher? Kesher? Connection. Connects, <coughs> right, to them. <coughs> connects them. Um, and you're by and yourself. No, like a one with and unites yeah. them. Ah. Right? Because if they're just ten random things that sort of don't have anything to do with each other, they definitely don't reflect you. So if you separate here, read on one um, more line. Begin the aunt Milgav. Milgav. What is Milgav? We just inside. had it in our. Yeah, inside. Very good. Remember Milgav? Mil, there's Milvar or Milgav we had with the fence. Oh. Who begin the aunt Milgav since. You are in them. Uvagin is it? Uvagin is since. The ant milgav, that you were in them. Therefore, I'll take over. Kol man, any yeah. person, the afrish, that separates chad michavre, one from the other one. If anyone's going to try and take one and separate it from the other one, me'ilein aser sfiran, from these ten sfiros, is chashivle, it's considered to him, that person who will separate them, kilu afresh bach, as if he separated you. Now you are basically inseparable wow. because you're not even like in the realm of counting and, and separating things. But you, but, and here you fashion these things and you are, so to speak, not in them to the point that you're hiding from us there. Nonetheless, you are the one that connects them and unites them. So therefore, anyone who separates any one of them as, as if they're separating you. Because this is, and this is, we'll stop here because this is mamish, the whole... This is like what the altar every wants to talk about. This is all these points. And he's saying that basically somehow it looks like you are in them because if they're going to separate you, if they're going to look at them distinct from each other, then they've basically separated you. And somehow through them, you can, have effect, you can have an effect on you. If you separate them, we get to you in some way because we mess you up, we separate you. Which means Hashem sort of unites with them in some kind of a significant way that even though they're sufficiently separate from Him, that He's hidden behind them, at the same time He's one with them to the point if you do something to them, in a certain sense, you do something to Him. So, uh, yeah, so Yesh Me'ayin has a little level of Islam. No one talked about Yesh Me'ayin. Because let's read on one more line. Okay. <laughs> well, actually, wait, we'll read. I want to skip a second. It's funny when we usually okay. read this, all just like... Blah, 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 blah. All right, let me, let's continue. <laughs> let's continue. We'll get to the Yesh Ma'ayan piece, right? This, right now, this is not called Yesh Ma'ayan. Why? Because we're talking about the world of Atsilus, the original ten ah, spheres, right. and that's not really a Yesh yeah, yet. Right, right, right. Uh, the Afresh is to separate? Yeah. And the Chavre was what? From its friend, like Chavir. Oh. One from its friend. One sphere from the other. The Elaine Aser Sphiran... These ten spheros, spheros, inun azlin, they go kesidran. They go according to their order. Chad arich, v'chad katsir, v'chad beinuni. What does it mean? And again, this this definition um, is also I, probably that it comes in the in the uh, in the English. It probably also comes from this mimer because the Alter Rebbe discusses this. These are kind of strange words. It says, "What is their order? One is long, one is short, and one is middle." What, what do you mean the three branches? How does that work? Keser, no? How does it work? 
Stoves. So the three lines? So why is one long, one short, and one middle? Stoves? There is a bainery that is a combination of both sides equal to the middle. And why we call one long and one short? That's a good question. Is the right side or the left side longer than the other side? It's a long, yep. short way. Huh? Yep. It is? Yep. How? The right side is into giving. So okay. Long. The left side doesn't want to give. Okay. <laughs> Very good. I got a short stick. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's exactly right. You must have read the Mimer, Rabbi. <laughs> so exactly. What does it mean long? It doesn't it means that it's basically extending itself. Oh, okay. Right? Short it's means it's pulling itself back. So it is chesed and gavura. And there's a middle which basically enables the two to come together in some way. In other words, you're gonna give but not so much. Right? Like we, exactly what we talked about my, yesterday. My arm longer than my left arm. Not longer, but it's like the we call it the, we do call it the yeah, dominant the, arm. The right? In general, we do say there's a difference between your right and your left arm. Your right arm is your dominant arm. And the what does it mean? The dominant is that basically it's the one, it's the one with the power. It's the one sending, and the left arm is the weaker. I mean, it's weakening things, so to speak. Even the left arm. Yeah. My, my left hand is it's weaker, but my right arm is stronger. Your left arm. Left arm. Right arm. Oh. Anyway, let's not get caught up in that. But that's the simple idea. The intermediary is what binds infinite expansion with infinite contraction. So basically, maybe you and I were talking to this mamash yesterday, but the idea of chesed, why it's called long, is because the idea of expansion, right? Hashem created one midah whose whole job is to just extend itself outwardly forever, right? Infinite expansion. That's the right side, chesed. Then there's the left side, gevura. It's called short because it has the exact opposite meter. It's the, it's the idea of uh, characteristics of saying no, 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 and no, more no. I'm not giving. I refuse to give. Not only not giving, I'm not even going to tell you I'm not giving. Just no, right? The, the infinite contraction to the point of no extension of self. So what are those two things in, if, what happens if you put those two things together in a certain sense? Like chaos. You can't have both those two things together because either they're, they're diametrically opposed to each other. Either you're giving or you're not giving. So there's a Bainani. There's a guy who's called Tiferes, you have Chesed and Tiferes, who's able to somehow make peace of them. Well, how do you make peace of them? You give, but you do not give so much. forever, right? You have to limit your giving. So that's like basically the orange. Okay, that's the idea. So that's Chesed and Tiferes. But this is the point I wanted to get to because it's in the mime. What's the line thing? Like right, middle, and left of the. Where do these lines come from? The, the tree of life, oh. right? The right side, chesed, gevur, oh, okay. chesed, uh, chokma, chesed, and netzach. The left side, bina, gevura, and hod. Oh. And the center, which is keser, das, whatever, tferis, yisod, oh, and malchus. Okay. Right? Those are called the three lines. The one in the middle is the binuni. The middle line, which goes from top to bottom, is called the binuni. And it has, it, it, the idea behind it is that it has the highest wow. reach and the lowest reach. Right. The other two lines, they don't go all the way up and they don't go all the way down. Wow. Right. And the reason is because it's able to fuse two opposites together. It has, it, somehow it's able to make sense of infinite giving and infinite contraction, which is a pretty great trick. Where does that trick come from? The essence of Hashem who has everything and therefore it reaches all the way to the top because only, the, only Hashem can, as, what did we just say a minute ago? He who separates them separates me. So in a certain sense they're bound together and that's the idea of the center column. It binds the two polars together. So you'd never. So therefore, he, Hashem, is in the middle. Where do we see that? Bapashtus. It says, it says, Haya hove right? Besifara. Hu haya hu hove hu yiye besifara. You know, you say that in Adon Olam every day. Yeah. What does that mean? What is Haya hove It was. It is. What is that? Yud Kevavke, right? Mm -hmm. That's the acronym or whatever the of Yud Kevavke. So it's in Tifara. It says it's in Tiferis. Wow. Because Havaya, which is this idea that can bind all things yeah. together, where does it sort of reside? In the center column. Because the center column goes up and touches the Atmus and goes, and therefore, like we learned in Lech Lecha, is able to therefore go all the way down to Malchus. So going on one more line, because we'll get to this one last point. You mentioned Yesh Ma'ayin, it's in here. The antu the anhiglon, ant who again you are he the anhiglon that that what do we say conducts them. Um, loan. Okay, it's them. Lahen, the lace man the anhiglach. But there is no one lace. There is not man meet someone the anhiglach that conducts you. So you conduct them, but no one conducts you. You don't have any mechanisms. Lach is you. Lach is you. La le'ela, 
Vela lasata, vela mikol sitra. Not from above, no one conducts you, not from below, and not from any side. Because the whole idea of high, up, down, and side was just created of a little realm that, so to speak, Hashem projected out of himself. So how's that going to control him? He's completely beyond it in every way. And then, this is the last line maybe we'll read, Levushin tekinas loan, you garments <coughs> tekinas loan, you f- fixed for yourself, deminahu, that from them, parchin nishmasin, fly out souls, livne nasha, to, to, to humankind. So this is an important line. Levushin tekinas loan, garments you made for them. What is that talking about? When it just says garments you made for them, who, wh- what garments? Mitzvahs. Mitzvahs, spheros, I would say, no, no, kalim, no. Spheros. We already have spheros, we just said. We already have kalim, and mitzvahs is a, a nice chiddish, but... Emotions? No. What is that? You have, we just, what, where are we? We've got the orient so... F- spheros. Oh, we said that. <laughs> sorry. No, no. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> mitzvahs. <laughs> <laughs> We have got the Urein Sov, which is Antu Chag, Velo B'chushban. You are one with no count. Then we have the Apikas Aser Tikunin, V'karin Lahon Svira. Then you have, you brought out ten Tikunin, garments, so to speak. I don't like that word yet. Tikunin, let's call them. And you call them Svira. Right? Where, what do we say those were exactly? What? Those ten Tikunin? They were Svira. Of Atzilus. Then it says, Levushin tekinas loan. Garments you made for them. Deminaihu parchin nishmasin livnei nasha. That from them will fly out souls for men. Ah, the souls come from Atzilus. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what is the garments you made for them? Different, different. different olam. The garments you made for them is no longer to the garments you made for him. They're the garments you made for them. For the ten spheros, they also get garments. You get it? They were called tikkunin, or spheros, that's the world of Atsilus, but then we put garments on them. What are the garments we put on them, exactly? I hope it's not polyester. <laughs> <laughs> Shatnas. Shatnas is only in Atsilus, not in the lower world. Bria, Yitzira, and Asiya. These are the garments. Aren't those called the garments? Do we call those the garments? Why do we call those the garments? You ever heard of that before? We called. You ever I heard of that heard before? Bri Yitzir and Asiyah called the garment. It's after the tzimtzum. It's after the tzimtzum. Yeah. Well, what after? I mean, there's a tzimtzum and well, then a tzimtzum. Yeah, well, there's a tzimtzum each. Right. All right, Chevra. I see that we've found our place of. We can be enlightened a little bit. Okay. Uh, Why does? Levi say lechaim. All right, David, bring out the lechaim. Okay, so anyway, <coughs> the point is like this. The world of Atsilus, the garments of that world are basically a parallel to what we call the garments of the soul. Right? So the soul itself, let's say, is, is following the exact same pathway that we've just described. Is there an Antu Chad of the soul? Antu Chad. Below Bechushman, you are one without out, without any calculation. Oh. Does the soul have a place where it like has that going for it? I think so. It does. Atzilus. Not Atzilus. Beyond that, Atzilus is the definition of of, of Bechushman, right? 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 Are we keeping ourselves together here? Yeah, yeah. We are Chelokelokami Mal Mamish. Right. At some point, we're just like with God everywhere He is. So yeah. we, there's a part of us which is Mamish or Ein Sof, right? But then, do we have? What part of us is, so to speak, has been brought out of the soul, ten tikkunin? What is that part of ourselves? The five parts of the Like nefesh and ruach and that, no? Esr tikkunin. What's the ten parts of the soul? I have five. Is five. Chochma, Bina, Das, Chesed, no? Ten spheros. We don't have ten spheros in our soul? Yeah. A Jew doesn't have ten spheros? Does. So what we're trying to say is that there's a part of you which, there's a part of you which is, there's a part of you which is beyond your ten spheros. And then somehow it was fashioned for you ten spheros, which we call the Kochos HaNefesh. We call them the powers of the soul. Tanya calls them the ten powers of the soul. You have ten soul powers. Okay? But then what do you have after that? 
Oh, Pitan, you guys learn Tanya every day, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, what does this mean after, what do you have after your ten soul powers? Malchus. No, Yisrael. What follows your ten soul, Malchus, let's say, is the oh, final. Thought, speech, and action. Thought, speech, and action. Hello, right? You have, this is the basic con construct of, of, of a year. Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah. We've got our essential level. We've got the level of we come into our ten soul powers. And those soul powers then want to express themselves. They have three garments called thought, speech, and action. Well, we, so those are basically, the reason we are constructed like that is because we are, we are a model of the universe, of God. God is a part of him which is Orin Sof, which is beyond Sphiros, onto Chad, below Bechushban. Then Hashem fashions for himself ten tikkunin and calls them spheros. That's like Hashem's ten powers of the soul. That's called basically the world of Atsilus. So we have a, so to speak, world of Atsilus inside of us. What is it? Our ten soul powers. Five, five. Oh, no. Our ten soul powers. Okay. Soul Hold on, I'm going to draw it on the board. And then, after the ten soul power, what does Hashem after have, have after the world of Atsilus? Bria. Bria. And then... Yitzir and Asiya. Those are the three garments, so to speak, of Hashem. They're His thought, speech, and action. That's they're, therefore they're he, just like we call thought, speech, and action our garments. They're also His garments. That's what it's, we just read. He made garments for them. What is the them that He made garments for? The ten powers of the soul, the, the, the Atzilus, the ten spheres of Atzilus, and then He made garments for them: thought, speech, and action. Those are called Bri Yitzir and Asiya. So then, what are inside? Antu Chad it's above the ten spheros. So what's our our insight? On two chad below b'chushpan. It's above the ten spheros. We can do that a few more times. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Right? It's it's. You just asked me what's the orient self. I said it's on two chad. <coughs> you are one without calculation. We're comparing us to our levels to his levels. You're right. So we also have a level which is beyond our ten spheros. It's the level where we're just pure, sort of one with Hashem, without the parts yet, the essence of the soul. What's that called? That's called Antu Chad Velo Bechushban. Or no, in, in soul terminology, it's called the Yechida. <coughs> I'm going to draw it on the board. Should I draw this thing, whole thing out a little bit? Might be helpful. Alright, now let's see if we didn't lose our markers, Eliezer. Alright, we got Alright, so just in short. We're saying that there are basically one, ooh, these are really new. One, two, three, four, five. There are five levels that we just described. Look at that. That line is just where it needs to be. This is called one, but it's really <coughs> Orin Sof. Okay, it's one without calculation. Okay? No spheros. This second level. Okay, we're talking about Hashem right now, what we just learned in, in Pesach Eliyahu. This is that you fashion for yourself ten tikkuni. Okay, and those are the ten spheres of Atzibus. Then, the line that we just read, Levushin Tekinas Lom. You fashion garments for them, and from them souls are given to man. What are them? There's another line here. These are the these are the garments that we just described, right? And really it means the worlds of Bria, Yitzira, and Asiya. Right? These are the garments that Hashem gave to these things that we just learned about in Pasakaliao, yes? Following this? And we're saying that the garments that Hashem made are basically breeds you're going to see. And souls fly out from them, it says, to man. Which means that our souls, when we come down to the world that we live in, basically, we sort of get like the real shape of our soul. In other words, some souls come from the thought of Hashem. Some souls come from the speech of Hashem. These days, it says in Tanya, that almost every single soul comes from Malchus, the Malchus of, 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 of Asiya. So our souls are very low, but basically... These, it's what he's saying about the souls on a side point, is that all the souls that have ever inhabited this world get their sort of, their level from one of these three places and then come down into the world. There's very, very few souls that come directly from Atsilos, like the wow. Avos, etc. But in general, all the people that ever lived, the Jews, get their souls from the thought, speech, and action of Hashem level, not the actual 
Esther Kochos of Hashem. Wow. Now, based on this, this is the, the, this is the important part, is how does this <coughs> relate to us? So there's also, as you know, five levels of the soul, right? Where's the Keter? Keter. This is Keter. Anyone get their soul from there? What? Anyone get their soul from up there? You know what's crazy? I'll be honest with you, I read in Basi Lagan, in, a, in a Basi Lagan, one of the Rebbe wrote, you know, 40 of them. Yeah. That he said that uh, the Rebbeim of Chabad, their oh, souls yeah. come from before the team tomb. Their mamash, their highest souls that have like ever been on earth. More than they, Moshe, they, Moshe Rabbeinu. More than Rabbeinu. Wow. Mo, the, the souls of, of, the, of the Avos and Moshe Rabbeinu, they come from Atzilus. It's a, well, Mo, Moshe's soul, it says, maybe comes from Tohu. It's, it, Moshe's maybe higher than the Avos. But even Tohu is after the team tomb. Basically, he says over there that they're, that whatever, whatever, it's crazy. They're yeah. mamash a whole other thing. Whole other thing. Shia. Okay, so now we're talking about us. So the soul goes to the point where it has the soul has the yechida. The yechida means one because it doesn't have parts yet. It's just united with Hashem. That's the level of our soul, which is connected with the Orient soul, which is not yet broken down to ten soul powers. Okay. Then the soul comes down to the chaya, which is basically the ten spheros of your soul. Now suddenly you've got like a definition. You've got a certain level of chokhmah, a certain measure of bina. You now are like sort of that. You have powers. That's called the chaya. Then you get into your garments of your soul, which is your thought, speech, and action. Three, four, and five. Right? So these are, these, these are basically, your soul follows, it's like a miniature version of God. We're, we're nefesh, made in His nefesh, image. And ruach. So nefesh, ruach, neshama, chaya, and yechida. Here, I started with the yechida, chaya. Thought is, is neshama. Speech is ruach. And action, this is mamish, illegible, it's more like just like a visual thing. <laughs> and action is nefesh. You follow all this? Let's get this out of the way so we don't get confused with this piece over here. Fingers to the okay. So, okay, we more or less have everything we want to have. It's a little messy, but let's go through it again one more time. We start off in the center here. Basically, we were just saying that Hashem is one without count. This is like a level of of uh, orange soap. Then Hashem makes things. Then Hashem makes ten spheros, fashions for himself Eser Tikuni. And this, is, we're saying, is all of a sudden there's ten things. There was just all before there was just orange soap. Hashem now has sort of like a definition of ten. And that refers, we said, to the world of Atzilus. And then Hashem fashioned, it says that He fashioned garments for them. Right? It says, Levush and Tekinas alone. He fashioned garments for them. So these themselves were, in a certain sense, garments for this. David translated the word Tikkunin as garments. Right? Because this is a certain level of garment. But then for these, so to speak, garments, He fashioned these garments. And these garments that He fashioned are Bria, Yitzir, and Asiyah, the lower worlds. Where basically the souls come out of, depending on if you're like the early generations, you know, or the foot generation. It's a long neck. But basically, <laughs> right, that's, that's where all the souls come from. You're like one part of sort of the supernal coma of... Uh, yeah. It's different back then. What the world is then? Yeah. Right? <laughs> this world? But down here? Well, that's the human. <laughs> right, okay. <laughs> oh, I see what you're saying. So, uh... That's Hashem. You have, they call it a dark world. <laughs> you have, you have the, the garments he's talking about here represents Bri Yitzir and Asiya. So going over to how this relates to man, because we have this whole thing inside of ourselves, we have a part of our soul which is unyet differentiated. It's like one with God. That's why it's called the Yechida, Dashan Yachid. It's one. And that's basically your soul as it resides in the Orient Sof, totally one. Then your soul fashions for itself ten tikkunim. Suddenly you have like a personality. You have a certain chokhmi, you have a certain bini, you have a certain das. That's like your soul, so to speak, at the atzilus level of your soul. Then this level of your soul, of your ten powers, fashions garments for itself, for this. It, this ten spheres, your chokhmi and das, wants to express itself and it needs garments to do so. So it fashions three levels of garments. It fashions that, or, or whatever, whoever fashions for them. But it, 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 it's, the garments go on here. So the garments are covering now this, and it's thought, speech, and action. Those are your garments. 
So in general, now we understand what we're talking about. We, in general, when we, when we say there's five levels of the soul, these are the five levels we're talking about. The Chaya, the, the Yechida, the Chaya, the Neshama, the Ruach, and the Nefesh, going from above to below. These are these five levels. It happens instantaneously? All? When we say it happens, what do you mean by that exactly? The, the different Karnatsilas. Uh, <laughs> uh, At a certain point, right around the bottom of this one, time was invented. Whoa. Okay. So it's hard to say that anything before that happened, and it's hard to say really in reality anything even after that happened, since time is sort of like an invention that beyond time is wrapped all around. But in the realm of time, it happened over so far over 5,776 years. What are the souls like from 3, 4, 5? <laughs> what are like the differences between them? Oh, so what is the difference between thought, speech, and action? Oh. Right? Okay. So we're talking about basically some souls are the realm of thought, um, which means they were like the Tanoim, basically. Oh. Oh. So they okay. came up with the mind okay. of the Gemara, you know That's what I'm saying? Cool. And then you have souls of speech. Speech is connected with the Midos, because Yitzira, oh, Yitzira in general is connected with the We know this already, right? You, it, this is like, like a separate thing, let's not confuse ourselves, but you have here <coughs> Yud K Vavke, right? 2, 3, 4, and 5 is Yud K Vavke, right? Because 1 is basically Kesser, which is beyond. You understand how Yud K Vavke, don't we always say that Yud K Vavke wow. is at Silas Bri, Yitzira, Nasiya? Don't we always say that? Mm -hmm. Right? So that we're, all we're doing, remember we talked about the crown on top of the Yud in yeah. the previous class? That's this level. That, that's the Yechida. The, the, above the Yud is this level number one. So basically, we're talking about Yud K Vav K over here, yes? So we can put in a few other interesting definitions to this chart. Me namely, we know that that He is connected with Bina, right? So that means that those peep souls that came from the He, they were, com they were like all about being wise and knowing Torah. They were the Tanayim. <coughs> they basically laid out like the, 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 the Gemara, as we know, because that's the brain of the Torah. They were the He, okay. the thought of Hashem. Then you have the Yitzira souls. What is Yitzira associated with? In the, in the, it's associated with the emotions. This is basically Za, the six emotions. Uh -huh. right? Yud, K, Vav. This is the Vav of Hashem's name. It's connected with the emotions, right? So there's a whole realm of Jews that were basically felt it. You know, we talk about our ancestors, like mm. they really meant it kind of thing. They were much feeling the love and fear of Hashem. They weren't necessarily Tanoim, wow. but they were carrying like the torch of Yiddishkeit through all the generations with Pashit, love and fear of God. Yeah, I mean, and then you have the, the Asiya, which basically means you're now bereft of any intelligence or emotions. <laughs> you just do it. And that's our generation, the just do it generation. And right, our generation really started maybe a little while ago, but that's the idea. So souls are at different <laughs> levels. We're not supposed to sit here and be Talmud Chacham on the level of the Tanoim because we, we're not, we don't have the souls for that. We have, and if we try and do that, we're totally ignoring what we do have souls for. We have a special soul. What's the Indian, what's the Indian of Misa over thought? It's like, it's like the, the heel over the head. You can, the heel is the one that has mysterious nefesh. You want to put your, mm. yourself into like, you want to, into like a hot bath. You're going to stick let's say, your heel in there first because it's not going to feel it as much as your head. So we have a koach of mysterious nefesh more than they did. That's what the Rebbe always brings out. He's always talking about mysterious nefesh. Just go crazy and do it, you know? Like, we're the army of Hashem. The Rebbe was bringing out our unique t talent. Look at the Jews in Russia, basically, how they had mysterious yeah. nefesh, but, you know? For beyond Tam Vadas, and we're, we're their children. That's, that's what we have. If we just, the Rebbe wanted us to put our mysterious nefesh into do good instead of like run away from bad guys. But we have that koach of mysterious nefesh. Anyway, I feel like we've got this organized here. The question is how Everyone do you understands do a, all this? Yeah. How do you, how do, you yeah. do Misa without having a, a little bit of, you know... No, no, so, so when it comes, that's a good call. So now, that's in general, like, your soul, let's say, is a Yetzirah soul, right? <coughs> but, it does, but at the end of the day, when you come back into a physical body in the actual physical world, you have all these powers. In other words, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a microcosm. So basically, it's not like you, when you have a soul over here, you just have the, a soul from Yitzira and that's it. Your your soul from Yitzira, it has, it has, it um, all all the so different. It's gonna come out more in a certain aspect. Yeah, right. right. So if someone so comes from, you. let's say Bria, Bria, Bria you'll be a more intelligent. Like you'll be more like, like a professor. Hot water. You'll be more intellectual <laughs> person than a more emotional. 
It's well, I mean, it's souls of Bria, we don't have them so much anymore. They were the Tanoi. They would be Mamish unbelievable geniuses that can contain the entire Torah in their head, no problem. You know what I'm saying? We don't have, that was like... So we get a smart person today. Right? That's what I'm trying to say. He's still from Asiya. He's from Asiya. But, but so, so therefore, in general, his whole thing is like smaller, but he still has all the levels. He still has all the levels inside of him. Your come from Asiya. Yeah, come from Asiya. Like our souls come from a Sia. No, there's a Sia Gashmi after that. This is the Seder Rishtalshu, then after the Seder Rishtalshu comes Gashmis. So this is a big line here where Hashem actually creates the physical fleshy world. And then he plugs in or like sort of, I, t- I call it like a, I forget what I call it, what's that called? Syringe? Yeah, but he sort of, oh, uh, yeah. so he squeezes in there like a certain level into every object from a higher spiritual world. So, so all souls made main, the line, same main line? Are our souls made at the same time? I don't know. Originally? Made at the same time? Again, you're talking about time. Where, where our souls come from, it's before time. But his time, which is unlimited. Our souls are there. No, no, in other words, remember, when we say he cr- this is where souls come from, we're not negating the fact wow. that souls had a previous home up here. Right? right? It's just that at that level, they were part of him. They were either part of him in a state where he himself was not even divided into parts yet, or they're part of him where he himself made ten powers, but he didn't actually yet think, speak, or do. So our souls are also hanging around in there, it's just that they don't, have, they don't get their own name yet. Because until you get basically a thought or a speech or an action, that's already something, so to speak, separate from Hashem. Just like in us, our thoughts are not us, that's why we, why we call them garments. Our speech are not us, we call them garments. So when, the, when Hashem came to this level, the soul, so to speak, took on an independent identity from Hashem. Whereas before that, it was there in a state of complete oneness with Hashem. So it, they exist on all the levels. They exist before time, the souls. Then they come into time and exist after Hashem brings so out his thoughts, speech, and action. They came time existence. They all came at the same time? At that time, they came to existence? Not only did they come at the same time, existence was fashioned around them. It doesn't say here he made worlds. But he made souls, right? So the souls basically were, came out, and the soul needs a home to, to work in. So the whole world of Bria is because souls were fashioned, you know, in Bria. The world Whoa. of Yitzhi is because souls were fashioned in Bria. This world is only here because souls are here to do... So basically, whatever you want to say comes first or last, but yeah, they were there from the beginning. Their whole thing is, is them. You say now that all the souls come from us here, right? But yeah. we know that since Mat is all, I don't know, since Mat is there, but past couple hundred years, there's no new souls coming in, right? The 600,000, we're just <coughs> ruling the souls. So when you say they're coming from a seal, what does that mean? Because the previous souls apparently came from Brilliant Sierra and the Sierra or whatever it was. Yeah, How can we, if we're Gilgulim, then we for sure get a couple of those. That's what, that's what I was going to No, say. not necessarily, because basically Unless, the uh, soul exists in all places. Your soul is simultaneously in all these different worlds at the well, same time, right? So, so part of you is like having a seal. Because the, okay, it's a good question, because what we're saying is when, you're, when your body is in, able of containing a certain level that's, like I was trying to say, like injected, that was the word, ah. into your soul, into your body from a certain place. So as, let's say you were reincarnated in, in the year 1500 in Svats, you were hanging around with the Arizal, at that time, a higher level of your soul was injected into your body, that you had like greater powers of perception. Whereas now, let's say that higher part of your soul is not is not um, conscious to your body. It remains, so to speak, in its home in its era, and a only a lower aspect of you is gener- is, is 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 put into your body. So, so it could be this, exactly. because you're not you're not you don't have the, uh, the access to the same power. Your soul stays the same, no. Well, it's, your soul is in different levels simultaneously. Like it's like wow. part of you is here, part of you is here. Yeah. Would it be part of you a certain consciousness of God, right? So at one time when you came into a body, they sent you with your consciousness of God. Next time they sent you, it's still a reincarnation of the same soul, the soul but they, they didn't give the you the whole package. They only gave you the Asiya of Asiya part of your consciousness. So you're basically the same person. You're actually just breaking off a piece of that soul. No, you you're not even getting that full soul. You know, it's like, yeah, it's I don't like, want to say breaking off, it's Behelam. It's like Shabbos. It's just not, it's not revealed to you. It's not like it breaks off, but it's not the higher parts of your soul are not revealed to you. Theoretically, you could access them. Is it like Shabbos, like where more of your soul like comes into your mm-hmm. body? Mm-hmm. That's what I'm saying. It's not broken it's like off. It's just pull, concealed. Like, like pulled down like, like a shoe. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, at least we opened Torah Or. <laughs> that itself is luminary. All right. We got something. That was good. Yeah.
crazy. What do you say, David Levy? Huh? Mm -hmm. so, is we're gonna get to the next so, so, so there's yeah. a time that all these different parts the one. Just, oh yeah, yeah, do yeah, they, yeah. All, they all become manifest at one time that would be great <coughs> all, all these different soul powers will, will all come out at one time you say at one time we had one certain part one time we had a different part there's gonna be a time where they're all fully vibrating parts yeah sure when yeah, a couple minutes while we're down there. <laughs> in that day when all things will be okay Listen, them hopefully, Hayom, in Makolo Tishmu. Tell them, we'll come here and learn. <laughs> Even after them, we'll come here and learn. <laughs> yeah. Wait, I guess you're, you're right, we won't need any teachers, but we'll just all come hang out together. With the conversation that the um, lowest is like really the highest, yeah. is that because the because it requires the most amount of Bob Luna to be like that low? Yeah. Bob Dylan would have like that. Which one? Highest be low, the low, the lowest be high. Times are changing. Like, uh, like that guy who went out to the oh, yeah, Genesis. Who? Uh, cool. Genesis. Genesis? Yeah, you gotta get in to get out.